The Dacha project was actually a study that started before the pandemic and this study came about because of the care home collaboration. We'd had a series of meetings to look at research priorities, to link people who were interested in similar areas of research. And one of the recurring um, questions that kept coming out was about data and information about residents and the need to reduce the constant demands on care homes for information from the regulator, from commissioners, from family, um, and from NHS professionals and the fact that they were constantly giving the similar information to, but not, but not the same information to different people for different reasons on top of all the information they needed to be able to provide care. So the DACHA study um, came out of that shared recognition about the importance of data. We put a bid into NIHR, which was successful, and that has representatives from seven ARCs and it's split in two. So the first half is really looking at how to improve research in care homes. So we've done a series of reviews, including Guy Perrier, who's with the East of England ARC, on looking at, well, we have spent millions on trials in care homes and very often they have either neutral or equivocal results. And his question was, well, is it about how we do the research with care homes as much as what we do. And he was able to develop um, a series of, um, if you like, domains or assessments for any researcher going into a care home to reduce the difficulties that a lot of the studies he reviewed identified around things like drift, that people start very keen and then they lose momentum, that the intervention needs to make sense to the staff delivering care and not just the senior members of the organisation. And that's led to um, a leaflet and to working now with the Clinical Research Network and the Enabling Research in Care Homes Network, both of which NIH fund. So then that's about reducing inefficiency in this really important area of work and also not being an unnecessary burden on a workforce who are already working at their limits. Um, and linked to that has been work that Lisa Irvin has been doing, where she is creating a repository of care home trials so that some research questions, people might not need to go to the care home, that they could go and do secondary data analysis because trials collect meticulous data about residents. And this repository is now at 8,000 residents. So you can ask questions of that data or you compare your study with the characteristics of that of the residents in that repository to see how typical or representative your work is. And going forward, that chair is now looking at um, developing a prototype minimum data set. And we're doing that in three ICSs, integrated care systems across the country. And each ICS has got uh, an ARC researcher, one from Kent, one from Northeast and Cumbria and one from um, East Midlands ARC. And we're asking if you can collect the data from the cloud. We're working with care homes that are digitally enabled. Now that's not the norm, but that's definitely the direction of travel. And then we're asking, can you link the data that the care homes collect on their residents with the data that sits in the routine data sets held in the ICSs, so like primary, care data and hospital data and urgent and emergency data so that you're not asking the care homes to tell you if somebody's gone to hospital you're not asking the care homes to tell you if their resident has had to use an out of hours service you can get that information from the ics data but you can match it with the data collected by the care home so that would be quite revolutionary if that works and we're working with two software providers so that's a a new departure for us to be working with commercial businesses um, who are being fantastic um, in collaborating with us. And because data has now rocketed to the top of the policy agenda, what was a bit of a niche interest amongst care home researchers across the arcs and working also with care home representative organisations, um, we are now 
meeting regularly with the Department of Health and Social Care and with NHS England and Improvement to share our findings and also to hear about their developments as they're also implementing policy around having a shared social care record. Um, and so that's been a, a, a real sh gear change really in how this study is very of the moment and um, trying to keep up to make sure that we don't um, not co contradict but that we also fit with policy initiatives but also making sure the policy initiatives uh, have access to our findings. Um, for example, we completed a, a national survey, Barbara Hanratty from uh, Northeastern Cumbria led that and the really big message from that was the care homes collect a phenomenal amount of data already and be very careful when you ask for more data. So, and we are currently doing a consultation, a national consultation to look at quality of life measures, because that was the one big issue that did come out both from the survey and from our earlier discussions with stakeholders that we know quite a bit, or we can collect data about residents' health, we can collect data about who they are and their characteristics, but having a standardized approach to know what their quality of life is like in a care home has actually been very difficult to do in a way that is meaningful, both for those who give the care, but also those who want to know if uh, people in care homes have got a good quality of life and if certain approaches um, to providing care improve their quality of life. And so that's currently what we're doing at the moment, doing a national consultation in partnership with the This Institute and their This Covery platform to do, do look out for that because we will be asking as many people as possible to comment on the best way to measure that.